physical precious metals are not a, a wicked awesome way to build your wealth. They don't cash flow, they don't yield income, they just sit there, admittedly looking beautiful, doing their job. Two houses in my neighborhood have burned to the ground over the years. One, because of a lightning strike, they weren't home. The other, most likely due to an open flame left unattended. Super scary. But what is the likelihood of my house burning to the ground? Small, actually. But what's the impact? It's huge. What's the likelihood I'll get into a serious auto accident? Probably much greater than a house fire, but still relatively small. However, what's the impact? It's big. Mrs. Yankee and I have homeowner's insurance. We have car insurance. Even though in the live free or die state of New Hampshire, auto insurance is optional. I I I'd be nuts not to have some. My point in all this, I think the possibility of an economic collapse, a dollar reset, our fiat currency burning to the ground, to stick with my metaphor, is absolutely possible. Maybe likely by the end of this decade. The gentleman I'll be interviewing in a minute agrees with me on this. However unlikely, the impact of such an event will be gargantuan and completely unprecedented. This is why I stack physical gold and silver as wealth insurance. Frankly, I think you're completely nuts not to have some. Stacking precious metals is a no-brainer when it comes to preserving one's wealth, one's uh, purchasing power. However, and this is a point I've made so many times on my channel, physical precious metals are not a, a wicked awesome way to build your wealth. They don't cash flow. They don't yield income. They just sit there, admittedly looking beautiful, doing their job. Now, I'm a passionate silver and gold stacker, you know that, but many of you know that I've been speculating in the commodity sector, in the uh, mining stocks in particular, for several years now. I don't put much of my hard-earned money into them, just about 3% of my portfolio, that's it. While I wait for the possibility of using my uh, stacking insurance, I also want to make a little extra profit, considering where I am convinced the price of gold and silver are headed by the end of this decade, and that is way up. Joining me today is Dennis Higgs, president of Austin Gold Corp. We'll talk about gold and silver, where we see them going in the next few years, and I'm going to see if his company could be a good fit for my current commodities portfolio. Welcome, Dennis. Thanks for joining Yankee Stacking. Yankee, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I just made the point in uh, the beginning of this video that physical gold and silver are excellent wealth preservation assets. Real money, not, not fiat currency. Stuff that protects our purchasing power. But it's not necessarily a great wealth building asset. Do, does that, do you agree with that statement? I agree with that statement, yes. Do you buy it? Do you hold it? The physical stuff. I, I, I do. And in fact, I can show you a silver coin right now if if, if you would like. I yeah. <laughs> I, I, you have one. Look at this. I that, love it. Can you see that? Hold okay. it up right in front of your face. Very cool. <laughs> and, and gold. Am I asking too much to have you pull out some gold? <laughs> well, I, I don't have gold coins sitting in my in my desk at the moment. That's why I pulled out a silver coin. Oh, that's great. Yes, I mean just just to back up the I mean right now gold is traded most recently at an all time well nominal high but an all time high. I mean you've got all these different influences uh, on on the gold price right now. You've got expectations of lower interest rates. I mean that's a key factor. You've got the possibility of worse than expected inflation or or the other idea the possibility of a recession. Uh, gold, as you know, is used to safeguard against geopolitical instability. And you've got, well, a couple of significant wars going on right now in the world. You've got Israel and Hamas, and you've got Russia and Ukraine. Uh, so those are factors. Of course, you've got strong gold purchases by central banks globally. 
Uh, and even the Chinese investors are, are buying gold right now to hedge against political instability and the real estate crisis in China. And then, of course, you, you've got a, <laughs> another interesting, we're going into an election year and you've got the, the possibility of uh, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. So these are all factors behind a, what I see as, as an ongoing, very bull market for the, for the next several years. Yeah, so you think maybe this breakout that we just had in gold could hold for the remainder of this year? Uh, uh, absolutely. All right, it seems like a lot of investors have been sitting on the sidelines with precious metals um, and precious metals mining stocks up till now. Well, certainly the gold stocks. The gold stocks have been uh, uh, not performing nearly the way that the markets, the general market indices would indicate. You've got mm -hmm. the Magnificent Seven, the Fabulous Five, Fantastic Five. I mean, these are the, uh, the technology companies that are giving the market its strength right now, but the general market conditions, the general uh, stock market, the other companies, <laughs> the non-tech companies aren't performing as well. But the key catalyst for gold equities to recover is, is, is a sustained rise in the gold price, which we're, we're, we've talked about. We're getting highs right now. Uh, and that's boosting the producer's profitability and uh, sparking recovery investor sentiment. So uh, interest in this uh, frequently overlooked sector is is getting better right now. And of course, in previous up cycles, gold equities have tended to deliver two to five times leverage to the rising gold price. So See, this is the point I, I was trying to make, and I want to put a finer point on it. You need, in my opinion, to be stacking physical gold and silver as a way to preserve what you already have. However, if you want to actually you know, increase your potential wealth, I think the opportunities with gold and silver mining companies are huge. Yes. Uh, gold equities have tended to deliver potentially astounding returns over a short period of time, especially when you consider how small the total gold mining sector is. And uh, I believe that the possibility of gold reaching $35,000, $40,000 this decade tw by 2030 is, is a, definitely a possibility. I love how you said by the end of this decade. I mean, people who watch my channel know that is really why I'm stacking because I do believe we passed the point of no return Back in 2008, 2009, and we went nuts. And it's gotten to the point in which I don't think we get out of this, this uh, decade without a revaluing, a reset, uh, whatever you want to call it, a true economic crisis. You're the uh, president and director of Austin Gold Corp. I've been watching your stock price. It's been doing quite well over the past few weeks. Is the recent rise in your stock price related more to news or because of the rise in gold spot price? Well, I, I would say both, all of the above. Uh, we've seen gold, we've talked about it already, how gold has been performing well. Uh, but Austin Gold, our, our uh, gold exploration company listed on New York, uh, we've been drilling uh, one of our projects and we're getting very interesting results, very encouraging results. So I think that's also a driving factor in, in why the uh, share price has been moving. Now, you said something interesting right there. You said exploration uh, company. I've talked about the Lassonde curve on my channel in prior videos because I think it's really important for people who are speculating in this to understand. Could you take a minute to explain that curve? And sure. So uh, you start with exploration. Uh, that's the early, early stages. You've acquired a project. You start exploring. And then somewhere along the way, uh, if you're in a good area, and, and you, you might have a discovery. Uh, a big gold discovery, a gold deposit discovery of some sort. And during that phase, the mining company's share price will typically go up very dramatically. I mean, we can you can go 10 times, 20 times uh, returns on, sometimes during the discovery phase of, of a mining company. And then they will go through, you know, advancing that discovery through permitting, uh, and towards development. And during that phase, typically the share price settles a little bit because different uh, phases of permitting doesn't create the enthusiasm in the market. But then once you get through that and start developing, then again, the share price typically goes back up and, and, and begins to climb again because now you're getting towards production and people can see that the company's going to be generating earnings and revenues and so on. So 
it, very typically the Hassan curve goes from a, a, a low point, share price goes up as you go into permitting development, it might come down. And then after you've developed and gone into production, the uh, share price typically goes back up again. So we are at the exploration stage, but not the early exploration stage. The, the, the projects we're working have had a, a, a lot of previous exploration work, and we believe we are pre-discovery. We, we hope that we're pre-discovery. We're, we're hoping, of course, we have a very significant discovery. Uh, we've got one project in Southeast Oregon and, and, and a couple others in Nevada, some of the richest gold districts in the world. So uh, Oregon's been underexplored for the last, well, for the last 30, 40 years. Uh, Nevada, on the other hand, uh, um, is very mining friendly, exploration friendly. And uh, you've got one of the richest gold districts uh, in the world in, in Nevada and uh, north central Nevada. So uh, now that Oregon has become a little bit more, how do I say, moderate on their stance about mining, and especially southeastern Oregon, we're seeing that Oregon is now uh, open for, for mining. So uh, both Oregon and uh, Nevada are excellent jurisdictions for, for what, we're, what we're doing with Austin Gold. Talk to me about the other things that make Austin Gold different. What, what sets you apart? We are in the United States. Uh, there's been other jurisdictions, uh, most recently Panama, where the government steps in after you develop the mine and they take it away from you. Yep. We consider the United States to be the one of the safest jurisdictions in the world to be to be operating. But other factors that uh, you've asked for, we, you know, the foundation of any company is, is its people, mm. and we have an experienced team with a proven track record of. Uh, discovery and advancing projects through development and, and production and, and ultimately take over by a bigger company. But the interesting thing about our company is we have the team that has actually built and put mines into production. So uh, as far as the takeover bid goes, we actually have the ability to develop the, the project ourselves, which might give us a better premium because, because we have that ability. So so takeover or, or uh, develop a project becoming a producing company uh, either of those are, are, are excellent strategies for, for the, uh, well, to reward all shareholders. We're excited about uh, Stockade Mountain, our project in Oregon, but, but <laughs> real quickly, I'll tell you about one other project, just one of our projects in Nevada, really quickly. Uh, the project is called uh, Lone Mountain. It's where they're discovering these great big gold deposits in Nevada. It's been sitting in one family for over 60 years. So arguably, it's 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 very underexplored, and and we're very excited to be getting active on that project. One of the roads from the property goes off of our property right down to the production facilities of uh, Barrick and Newmont. So the mining facility is already built. If we have our discovery at Lone Mountain. Oh, that's fantastic! Wow, Dennis, I would love to see that one day. That sounds really cool. We'd love to get you out and show you. But something else that might be of interest is that. We're, we're small in our market cap. We've, we've only got um, 13 and a quarter million shares outstanding and 90.1% of the share structure, the shares outstanding is owned by management and directors. So I love that. Ownership uh, is also really important. That's cool. It keeps us very motivated to be focused <laughs> on, the, uh, on the target, on the goal. Well, I do have your ticker symbol right up on the screen. I've had it up the whole time. Dennis, A-U-S-T. You're on the New York Stock Exchange. That's pretty big. That is awesome. We're, we're rare to be an exploration company uh, with all resources. We don't have a gold mine producing somewhere uh, to be listed on New York. Uh, but, but Yankee, I've got a simple way for your listeners to remember our symbol. I'll, I'll tell you very briefly. A-U-S-T is the symbol. A-U is the symbol for gold. And S-T is the symbol for street. So you've got Gold Street. That, that's Ooh. our symbol. So you, you won't forget it now. Ooh, I like that. I will definitely keep a close watch on Austin Gold. This is not stacking we're talking about here, right? This is a speculative play on both the future price of gold and the quality of Austin Gold as a junior mining company. You're in that uh, you know, pre-discovery phase, if you will. So there's a lot of risk but there's a potential for a lot of reward. And in my humble opinion, you should not put any of your hard earned money into Austin gold or any other junior until you've one stacked physical gold and silver first, and you have a good handle on your risk tolerance for this type of investment. You need to check them out. Maybe put them on your watch list. 
and research them carefully before you buy anything. Do you agree with that, Dennis? Uh, I, I do agree with that. absolutely agree with that. I, I can add just a quick comment to that. I mean, specifically about Austin Gold, I can't tell you with certainty that we're going to have a discovery on the projects we're working on. Mm -hmm. We believe strongly in what we're doing. Our geologist believes very strongly that we have that very significant discovery potential. Our projects in Nevada are in one of the richest gold districts in the world. And what happens uh, if you do? What happens if you do we, discover it, like you're if hoping? If we have a discovery with very small company, if, you know, one gold mine in the, uh, well, there's two different gold mines that are very, very large in the Carlin Trend, just 20 miles east of us that I mentioned. One of them has 45 million ounces of gold, and it was the basis for the entire, the building of the entire Barrett Gold. It was the start of Barrett Gold, which is now the second largest gold mining company in the world. Oh, so, yes. Very uh, familiar with Barrett. And that's where they got started. Newmont, same thing. They've got, wow. Newmont is the largest gold mining company in the mm -hmm. world, and they've got their projects in, in that part of Nevada as well. So I can't tell you with certainty that we're going to have a discovery, but when, you know, the prize is multi-billion, worth multi-billions of dollars. This is also a leverage play on where we, you and I, and a whole bunch of other people watching, think the price of gold is going to go to. Again, if gold hits 3200 like the you know inflation-adjusted all-time high Possibly really is. this year for 3000 yeah, yeah, right? Three, four, five, six. It's going to make a big difference to a lot of juniors, including yourself. Absolutely. Thanks so much for the info, Dennis. That was really fun. Yankee, thanks ever so much for having me here today.